Oh, good evening and welcome to Northern Cooking. Cue the music, Dave. <laughs> cook parking today um, so I'm going to take you through it step by step you'll see on the screen now the recipe right, magic okay so first thing to do is we put the oven on to pre-warm it while we're cooking um, for this recipe with parking we put it on a low heat 140 degrees so I'm going to put that on now, and it's a fan oven, um, and we put it on low because there's a lot of sugar and syrup in this cake, and if the temperature's too high, it crystallises and the cake was rock solid. So you've got to keep it at a low temperature, and the more sugar you put in, the lower the temperature you've got to keep it, and 50 minutes, 50 minutes is the maximum if you put it on for longer than 50 minutes it will crystallize it out again 50 minutes is based on a small baking tin here's my baking tin it's about what i don't know 25 centimeters deep so a couple of inches for for some people in audience if you have a deeper um baking tray for your cake you've got to put it on for longer obviously um so 50 minutes for this small one if you're going to do a big thick one you'd have to put it on for longer depends on how big your, your cake tin is but 50 minutes is for, for this one there's two bits to this cake mix there's a wet mix and there's a dry mix and i'll do the two bits separately and then you bung them all together and mix them up and stick them in the baking tray and put in the oven right okay i need a pan i need a pan this is for your wet mix and you need to use a non-stick pan um, because this is going to be the sugar and um, you don't want it to stick to your pan so that's the important thing um, <clears throat> so I'm going to melt the sugar the treacle the golden syrup um, and the butter together in this pan so and I need to weigh it out so I've got some scales here um, and what I'll do is I'll put the pan on the scales so I'll just put everything in the pan and then I can put the pan on the hob so um, if I start set my scales to zero yes, I want 100 grams of butter unsalted normal butter from um, what well, from wherever butter's butter you don't need anything fancy so I'll stick that in there. Um, that's about 50 grams. So I want some more out of this packet. As you can see, I do all this on the hoof. I don't have anything pre-prepared, just so you can see how easy it is. Um, so I'll cut some butter there. And um, we'll stick that in the pan. Spot on, ideal. So that's your butter in the pan. And next we want 100 grams of soft brown sugar this is light brown soft sugar you can use any brand you want but i'll use this one and we want 100 grams of this so we shove that in the pan sugar and your key ingredients so one of them is your typical golden syrup so um, I like to use um, Lyle's golden syrup it's got the dead lion on the front surrounded by the flies classic British products I like this but you can use any brand of golden syrup you don't need to be fussy so we need um, 80 grams of this 
Now, the type of parking that we're going to be making today is traditional Lancashire parking. Now, you can have a Yorkshire parking as well. And the main difference between a Yorkshire parking and a Lancashire parking is the amount of golden syrup and the amount of treacle. So the Lancashire, Lancasterians among us prefer a bit more treacle in our parking. And in Lancashire, we have our own treacle mines in Rochdale. Everyone knows about the treacle mines. So <clears throat> if you can get, mmm, delicious. If you can get proper Rochdale treacle, grand. But fortunately, I've got to make do with Lyles again. Same brand, but they do treacle, and the treacle's pretty good. But fortunately, it's not from the Rochdale treacle mines. So, <clears throat> we need, because we're making Lancashire parking, not Yorkshire parking, 100 grams of this. So it's a bit more than the golden syrup. So, here we go. And you'll notice it's very thick and doesn't flow very easy. So if you wanted to make this a bit more easier to handle, you could put this in a bit of warm water. It warms up the syrup or the treacle and um, it makes it easier to handle. So this might take a while actually putting this in this pan. Yeah, the, the Lancashire's parking is, tends to be a bit more treacle in it. But you don't want to put too much treacle in because if you overdo the treacle it becomes a bit bitter it's not sweet and you don't want a bitter cake no 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 yeah you, you, you want a nice cake so getting the balance between your golden syrup your sugar and your treacle is pretty key to making the best parking so um i'm gonna have to help some this out with a knife I'll stick a knife in, get that going. Um, I'm running out of treacle here, but don't worry, I've got backup treacle. Um, and I'm just going to wash my hands because they're a little sticky. All right. All right, so I'll get my backup treacle out, which in this case is just a new tin. So I'll open a new tin of treacle. Um, and it's got one of these old fashioned tins, which I love, because you can do all sorts. I like to put my screws in this when I finish, you know, anything else I might decide to snip off. So use the back of a spoon to open the tin. Oh, it's lovely and thick and gloopy, it's marvellous stuff. But luckily, in my sharp memory, I know I was up to 350 grams of stuff in there. So I only need 35 grams of this. So I'll put that back on there, set it to zero, and now I know, I'll use this knife as well. I only need 35 grams to add to my mix. Oh! Right, so I've gone over a bit, because you don't want too much treacle spoiling your cake mix. We've got 100 grams of butter, 100 grams of soft brown sugar, 80 grams of golden syrup, and 100 grams of treacle. Marvellous. So I'll put the pan on the hob, put it at a medium heat. We don't want to burn anything, we don't want it boiling, we just want it all melting together. And um, if you've got a wooden spoon, this is the time to get out the wooden spoon, which is at the back of my knick-knack drawer. I'll leave on without it, wooden spoon. So that's your wet mix, and then I'm gonna show you what I put in the dry mix for this cake. And um, similar to that, I'm gonna use a food mixer. I'm gonna shove the food mixer on the scale and set that to zero. So what do we want in here? So some self-raising flour, obviously the heart of the cake mix. So we'll put in self-raising flour. Now normally, my grandmother used to teach me to sieve the flour before I put it in. 
and the sieve in the flour is, um, they'll say 100 grams, I meant 150 grams. So sieving flour is in order to get all the lumps out and make it a bit finer. But we don't need to do that today because we're going to shove it through the mixer first and the mixer's going to chop it up and get all the lumps out for us first. So 150 grams of self-raising. I've got my own brand of oats here. Um, that was me when I was a bit younger. Um, but as you know, I'm not Scottish. So that's, that's uh, you know, marketing for you, isn't it? Anyway, we want some oats. Unusual for a cake, but this is what gives a parking body. And if you use too much oats, it becomes more like a flapjack. We don't want that. So the idea is to use just enough oats to give it a bit of body. Um, and you don't want thick, big oats, you want small oats. So that's why we're gonna chop them up a bit in the food mixer first, to make them a bit smaller. So, um, <clears throat> so we want 80 grams of oats. So, up to, um, two, there we go. 80 grams of Scots porridge oats. And then we um, also put a bit of stuff in this dry mix, some spices to give it a bit of um, flavour. So we like ginger. So most parking recipes call for ginger. Um, but I like to put in a bit of nutmeg as well and a bit of cinnamon. There's my cinnamon. So I put in two teaspoons of, in this mix, two teaspoons of ginger and one teaspoon of the other two. So we'll do that. There we go. Smash it. So I'll put these back in the spice rack. And then we give all this dry stuff a mix up and while we're doing that, we just check on our wet mixture to see how that's melting down. And it is getting a bit runny now, yes. Uh, but the butter's got a bit of weight to melt. See, I've not got it on a very high heat, it's on a low heat, so because I don't want it to boil or anything like that. So let's um, chop up our dry mixture a bit. Only a bit, not too much. Give it a good mix. Have a look. And what we want is not chunky oats, and that's ideal, perfect. And there's no real big lumps in there. I'll give that a stir around. No, it's all quite smooth. What we're going to add to that then, to finish it off, so it's dry mix, is once the butter's melted, is we tip all this in there, we add an egg to bind it. Now just a bit of notes about eggs. My grandma always told me the best eggs to use for cooking, for baking, are duck eggs. So I'm going to use a duck egg. But you can use a hen's egg, it's fine. You can use any type of egg you want, as long as it's a reasonable size. You don't want it too big, so no ostrich eggs, really. Um, but if you want to use a turkey egg, can you get turkey eggs? I, I, I don't know. Or if you want to use a seagull's egg, I wouldn't go out hunting wild eggs because that's illegal and um, it's not something I advise you to do. But a hen's egg or a duck egg or a goose egg. Might be a bit bigger goose egg for this cake. Anyway, that's nearly melted. So I'll get the egg and I'll use a knife to crack it and you've got to do it properly crack it in a, a glass first it's just to check that the eggs okay and there's nothing wrong with the egg and it looks nice and it also stops you getting shell in your cake mix so we crack that egg into your glass first 
and we can have a look at that. And, no, I'm not going to down it. Not, not today. Um, we'll put that in the food mixer. Okay. Grand. Oh, now my treacle and everything is almost boiling. Not quite. So it's all melted. I'll just give it a good stir, make sure it's all mixed together. I'll switch my hob off. And then I can put that in with my cake mix. And the beauty of using a non-stick pan is that most of it will go in and not stick to the pan. There we go, like magic. Get all that cake mixture in there. And it's smashing. Right, I'll put that over by the sink. I'll put a bit of water in it. I suggest you put water in your pan straight away. Sorry, you can't see me. But um, that's so that the, the treacle and the sugar doesn't go all toffee-fied and stick to your pan and you'll never get it off. Right, so we've got all that in our food mixture. Mixer. And I'm just going to mix it all up together for a bit. So, here we go. Make sure all the flour and everything, all the gubbins in there, is all mixed together. And no bits are stuck. Yeah. That'll do us, I think. That'll do us. And then, if I show you the, the mixture, that's the colour and consistency of the mixture, and it looks like it's got lumpy bits in it. In it but the lumpy bits are the oats so when you look at it you think oh it's gone a bit lumpy it hasn't that's the oats so just a point on your baking dish now I suggest that you line your tin with greaseproof paper I will put it in the greaseproof paper because if you just put it straight in your tin you'll never get it out of your tin this cake is really sticky it'll stick to your tin and you'll never get it out once you get it out of the oven. So I always put it in greaseproof paper, um, which has been shaped to match the tin. So, all right, I pour all that in there. And it is thick and gloopy. I might need a spatula for this. And it is very sticky. But you can smell, you can smell the treacle, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. It's almost like, it's like being in um, um, Rochdale, you know, where you can smell the treacle mines and the stuff that comes out there. Well, the hills behind Rochdale, they're not quite in Rochdale. And they're in a secret location that's only known to a few people. It's true. My uncle Bernard used to work down treacle mines in Rochdale. Well, that's another story for another day. Right. So that is the mixture in my cake tin. Grand. If you've got small kids or even a dog, you can let them lick it clean. But I haven't got any of those today. So that's it. So the last thing to check now is that whether your oven is up to temperature. It is. Great news, the light's off, so I can bung it straight in. But as I said, 50 minutes, no more, no less. So I'm just gonna put this in the oven now. On the top shelf, but it doesn't matter because it's a fan oven. You can put it anywhere in, in there on a fan oven. So 140 degrees, 50 minutes, and then we'll have a look at what it looks like when it's done. Hello, um, so, um, the parking is nearly done, just waiting for the alarm to go off. And when I take you out at uh, Southern, I'll show you what, what I tend to do to check it's cooked and uh, um, and we can see the final product. Yeah, so any time now the alarm should go off and um, it's ready to come out. Oh, there's the alarm. So um, it's important that you don't open the oven before the 50 minutes is up because if the cake isn't cooked properly it'll sink in the middle and I'll explain why in a moment.
right, let's get this baby out of here. Oh, she's looking good. Yes, yes. Nice. Now you can see I'm just using a tea towel, not oven gloves like some southern people might do. Apologies if you're from the south. I'm talking like the deep south. Not, not South's a good place, I like it. Not a lot, but I like it. Um, right, so we're taking the cake out, we'll, we'll, we'll close the oven. And what I do is check that it's cooked. And the way I check it's cooked is I get a, a knife, it doesn't have to be a sharp knife, any knife will do. Stick it in the middle of the cake and take it out. And look at the knife. Now if there's anything stuck on the knife, it means it's not cooked. Well, that knife's come out clean as a whistle. Um, which means the cake is cooked. What I finished parking should look like brown, brown, obviously caused by the treacle. If you want to know more about the Rochdale treacle mines, check the links at the bottom of this um, video. Some people don't believe they exist. Right, so in order to, to make this, uh, to cool this, I'm gonna take it out of the tin, because if it cools in the tin, it'll tend to, it might, it might stick to the paper and everything. So what I like to do is, and it's cool to the touch the paper now, it's been out of the oven for a few minutes. Just lift it out of the cake tin, and you can put it on a cooling rack or something, but I've just, Put it on a little shelf there um, and I'll just unstick the paper just around the edges and that's beautiful. Keep all the, the bugs and the creepy crawlies off it and the blackjacks and whatever else. Um, <clears throat> so that should be cool in 30 minutes but the best thing to do with a cake like that is to let it mature because it's got the treacle and the golden syrup, after a few days, it, it kind of make, it goes a bit more sticky and it just matures better. And they say you should leave it up to two weeks. I don't know about that, but I'd like to leave it a few days before, um, before you, you, you eat it. As I said, uh, I'll leave the cake to mature for a few days, but I'm going to give you a, a bit of a, a bit of a tip here. Now, this is not to everyone's cup of tea, but I like to do this to give the top of the cake an extra sticky crust. I like to sort of paste some of the treacle over the top, and when you leave the cake to mature, it slowly soaks into the cake and gives you that sticky finish to the top. It's beautiful. We love it. So I'll show you how I just do the treacle because um, if you take the treacle straight out of the tin it's too thick to spread. So you want to heat it up um, so it's easy to spread over the top of the cake. And the way I do this is with a, a bath of boiling, well hot water. So I've just boiled a kettle. I'll put a bit in my, um, my mum's Pyrex dish um, like that. And I've already decanted some of the treacle into this little glass. And this is a Pyrex glass, so it won't break when I put it into hot water. You could use a mug for this. Maybe I should have used a mug. It's a bit more northern. But I wanted to so you could see um, what's going on in the glass. So I'll put that in there just for maybe a minute or so. It'll make the treacle really runny. Parkins, one of those traditional cakes that you give to the kiddies when they're enjoying the fireworks. And remember, if you're gonna use fireworks, be safe, kids. Uh, um, just to heat up a little bit in the, in the water bath, the hot water bath, so it should be nice and runny now. And um, as you can see, it is quite runny now, the treacle. So I'm gonna use this like paintbrush use any type of brush this is for glazing uh, pies and cakes and whatever so um, I'm just gonna take my cloth off and then just put this spring spread up some of this over all the top of the cake in fact I'm gonna pour it on and then I can just spread it around like that 
marks. I should have enough treacle to put a nice coating on the top. And I say, all this does is make your cake that, it'll take a few days for it to soak into your cake and then your cake will be that extra bit sticky once it's nice and matured. So there's a bit more there. Get it round all the edges. There you go. And um, smash in, champion. Um, and we just, um, I'll put that in a cake uh, dish later. I'll put my cloth back over the top. I've got to be careful, I don't want to get treacle all over it, so just, I'll just gently put it on the top. You will get a bit of treacle on it, but it'll be fine. And that's parking, and it's smashing. And we can enjoy that with our fireworks. A nice big roaring fire, and some other Lancashire treats, which maybe I'll show you how to make them. Until next time, folks. Cue the music, Dave.